did you know that the Matter Smart Home Protocol was first called CHIP? or the Project Connected Home Over IP. Personally, I think Matter is a much snappier name. Since it rolled out just a couple years ago, Matter has gained a lot of traction. There are more and more Matter certified devices rolling out each and every day. So how do you take advantage of Matter for your next IoT design? You could start with this here Chalk Talk. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Johannes Kolber from Infineon and I explore how you can add matter and security to your next smart home project with the Optiga Trust M Matter solution. We also investigate the steps involved in the Optiga Trust M Matter design process the details of the Optiga Trust M Matter Evaluation Board, and how you can get started on your next Matter IoT device. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Johannes. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. It's nice to be here. Excellent. So we're talking about the Optiga Trust M Matter family, but Johannes, before we get started, what all will we be covering today? So first of all, I want to give you an introduction to the Optiga Trust M family, because this is the global family of products where the Optiga Trust M Matter, which is our latest product, is one of the variants. For the Optiga Trust M Matter, I want to give you an introduction into the product, uh, an overview, and also tell you a little bit about our evaluation platform, The Shield. Once that's done, I want to give you some introduction to get started with building a Meta device and also test the other evaluation step, which is injecting the Meta credentials via our provisioning harness. And at the last point, I want to give you some info or resources where to get started, what to get. Fantastic. So, Johannes, security is a critical component to any IoT design. And Optiga Trust M can help us with that, right? That's the idea. So usually by adding security, you want to protect something. In the Internet of Things, this can be data from sensors, communication across different networks, or the device's integrity. Now, we have, broadly speaking, two options to add security to any IoT design. Either you use an integrated solution as part of the MCU, or, as in our case, a discrete secure element. I don't want to get into the detailed differences and pros and cons, but a discrete secure element like the Optiga Trust M is a specialized and tamper-resistant companion to an MCU, which has the benefit that it provides a hardware-based root of trust and it can be added to any MPU or MCU. Our Optiga Trust M specifically allows for an easy integration on any platform due to the open source and platform agnostic host library. And it brings a range of features with it, like a high common criteria EAL 6 plus certification and a lot of cryptographic algorithms and acceleration. Since the Internet of Things is a very broad term and application, Infineon has by now built a family of this Optiga Trust M with dedicated use cases. Fantastic. Now, can you explain a bit about the different elements included in this family? Sure. Let me start by saying that all of these product variants have the same feature set. So features are, for example, the I2C interface with an optional encryption, so we call it shielded connection, a 3 by 3 millimeter use on 10 package, high-end cryptographic support for ECC, RSA, and AES, and many other useful algorithms. The Optiga Trust M can hold up to 15 kilobytes of user data, and some of this data is dedicated into key and certificate slots. This data can be programmed by an OEM, but it can also come pre-provisioned out of our own Infineon production. And that's where the variants differ. So to start, the V3 is our generic version. Here, you will only get one ECC key and certificate, and it is intended to play around with and for any application, so to say. The Optiga Trust M Express has a strong focus on supporting cloud connectivity. Different product clouds like Microsoft Azure or Amazon Web Services require different certificates and key algorithms. And as such, you get three pre-provisioned keys and certificates for this use case. Additionally, we offer a service called Sirent Cloud ID, 
which supports a very simple and easy one-click provisioning of these certificates to your chosen product cloud. The Optiga Trust and Meta is, as the name suggests, intended for use cases in the new smart home standard Meta. We offer a special provisioning service together with Kudelski AOT to bring those Meta-related credentials to life. And last but not least, we also offer the Optiga Trust and Fit, which is fully customizable. As an OEM, you decide what data shall be stored on the chip, and we from Infineon will inject this in high volume for you on wafer level. Today, I want to focus on the Optiga Trust and Matter. Okay, so let's dig into the Optiga Trust and Matter. Can you walk me through the design steps? So all starts with the evaluation phase. So an OEM tries our product and integrates it into their design. And then the volume ordering comes. The interesting part here is that all our physical chips are matched with their digital identity at Kudelski IoT. To claim and bind your devices to your personal account, you will need the so-called real ID, which can be obtained from the barcode product label on the real box. Our partner, Kudelski IoT, hosts one of the relevant Meta product attestation authorities. This root CA will be used to issue the OEM-specific structure of product attestation intermediates, or PAIs, and eventually device attestation certificates, or DACs. The private key for each device attestation certificate is already on the Optiga Trust and Matter since it's left the Infineon factory. At the last step, an OEM needs to insert the personalized DAC into the secure element to make the picture complete. Okay, so stepping back a bit, can you explain a bit about the challenges that the Optiga Trust M Matter helps solve? Certainly. So in general, the Matter standard aims to improve the compatibility of different smart home devices and as such the user experience. One of the pillars for Matter is the usage of certificates and keys for all devices, which prove the authenticity of said device. Now, how would you handle those certificates and keys and inject them at some point to your device then? This is where the Optiga Trust and Matter comes into play. The secure element comes pre-provisioned with the relevant keys, and you only need to retrieve the certificates from our partner, Kudelski IoT. Once that's done, the Optiga Trust and Matter stores all those credentials safely and helps the host MCU during the attestation and configuration phases. Of course, it doesn't stop there. As it's a highly advanced secure element, it is on the OEM to decide what other use cases could be offloaded to the Optiga Trust M, like, for example, the secure storage of access keys or the encryption of surveillance data and much more. Okay, so if my audience wants to get started using the Optiga Trust M Matter, do you guys have an evaluation board to help them on their way? Yes, definitely. So we decided to go with a MicroBest compatible Optiga Trust M Matter shield. Of course, we are targeting Matter applications with this evaluation board. And besides the Microbus compatible layout, it also features a quick connector on the backside. But whatever pin layout you choose, the connection is very simple as we only require four pins for I2C and power. To improve the user experience out of the box, we decided to flash each shield with its own set of matter test credentials. With those, you could get started right away with our evaluation kit collection and build your own matter device. But the shield also supports the claiming and provisioning of meta certificates from Kudelski IoT. Fantastic. So if my audience is looking to build a matter device, Johannes, where should they start? That's easy. Hopefully with Infineon parts. <laughs> the basis is of course our Optiga Trust and Matter Shield. But any secure elements needs a microcontroller. And here we will be using the PSOC 62S2 Wi-Fi Bluetooth Pioneer Kit. And to bring everything together, so to connect the shield to the PSOC, we'll be using the Optiga Trust Adapter. Here in this table, you can see exactly what I mean. All of our Optiga Trust Meta shields come pre-flashed with Meta test credentials, so the DAC, PAI, and certificate declaration, which are all issued by the official development product attestation authority. This allows a very smooth onboarding experience as you basically just need to plug everything together, flash the kit with a pre-compiled hex image, and use the smart lock in your Meta Smart Home environment. You will get all the necessary information and steps on our public GitHub site, 
which is linked here under the Getting Started link. Okay, so what would a typical application look like? So Meta brings different smart home ecosystems together. And this also means the simultaneous support of different global players like Apple, Google, Amazon. With Meta as the application protocol, our evaluation set that I just showed you acts as a smart lock, which can be integrated in Apple Home, Google Home, or both at the same time. So different physical protocols are being used, like Bluetooth Low Energy for the commissioning, as well as Wi-Fi during the usage phase. And our Optiga Trust and Matters make sure that everything is secure. By the way, this kit has been tested and certified by the CSA, and you can find the certification on their public webpage. So earlier you mentioned inject matter credentials. Can you explain how that works? Yes. So we have a few steps to take before the credentials can be injected though. First, the real ID must be reported to Kudelski IoT in their online portal. You can access this portal through the Infineon OSTS service. The real ID is part of the barcode product label. For our Optiga Trust and Meta Shield, it is printed outside on the box. We from Infineon have already provided the digital IDs or rather all the necessary information to Kudelski IoT. By entering the real ID in the platform, this information gets matched to a, your user account. You can then set the PAI, vendor ID, and product ID that should be used for the DAC generation. Kudelski IoT will generate a so-called bundle file containing all the credentials. This bundle file is essentially a zip file and can be downloaded and will be used as input for the credential injection. We've built a supporting tool set on a Raspberry Pi, but it can run on almost any Linux-based system that only needs the bundle file as an input. So connect your trusted Meta Shield, execute the script, and the certificates will be injected into the secure element. All right, so what kind of supporting documentation do you guys have to help design these kind of applications? A lot, and everything is public in our case. So you can either start with the Meta software development through the Meta SDK. The Optiga Trust M functionality is integrated from version 1.1 and up. Here we have the PSOC 6 log application as an example. Or you start at our main GitHub repository, the Optiga Trust M host library. Here you will find all the information you need to integrate the secure element into your design, like the data sheet, solution reference manual, and even some questions and answers asked by previous customers. Last option is to use our get started guides and application notes. Again, everything is public on GitHub, and you can use the links here to start developing right away. Fantastic. So if my audience is ready to get started, where should they go? Scan the QR code displayed here, which will take you to the Mouser webpage of our Optiga Trust and Meta Shield. Then you can order the Shield and get started with evaluation and development. Fantastic. Well, this was super cool. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. It was a pleasure. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.